this lesson, we're going to look at towered airports on a VFR sectional. Here we are in Los Angeles, and we can see that there are a lot of airports here. Now, the first thing to notice is that most of these airports are blue. A blue airport on the VFR sectional is going to have a control tower. The tower may not be open all the time, but it does have a control tower that does control that airport. A magenta airport, such as Compton here, does not have a control tower, and you'll have to use the common traffic advisory frequency when going into Compton in this case to announce your position to other traffic. Okay, so now that we know what a towered airport basically looks like on the VFR sectional, let's see what information we can get from the symbol. A solid circle with a runway diagram in the middle of it indicates that the airport has runways that are hard surface, so they're paved, they're greater than 1,500 feet long, and they're 8,069 feet or less. Now 8,069 is kind of a random number, I know, and it's only because the length of a runway that can fit within the little circle here on the diagram is 8,069 feet when the FAA goes to draw diagrams to scale. So we know this airport has a hard surface runway. It's between 1,500 and 8,069 feet long. There are tick marks around the circle, which indicate that fuel services and other services may also be available from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and the airport's also attended during those hours. The star up here indicates that there's a rotating beacon at the airport, and again the blue color shows us that there is a control tower. Next we're going to move down here to the airport description. Now I know it's kind of busy in this airspace, so I'm going to draw kind of a square around what we're looking at here. This description here goes to Hawthorne, which is the airport that we're looking at. First we have the airport name, Northrop Hawthorne, the airport identifier. In this case, just like non-towered airports, it's going to be just three letters or a combination of letters and numbers. We're not going to put the K in front of there. Now on the next line, we have CT and 121.1. This is the control tower frequency for that airport. So when you're looking at the VFR section, it's a quick reference to dial up the control tower so you're able to talk to them if you're coming inbound to Hawthorne. Next we have the star. The star indicates that the control tower does not operate continuously. So it may be open, let's say, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. or something like that. Usually at airports where they don't get a lot of traffic in the overnight hours, the control tower is not going to be open full time. Now, when the control tower is not open full time, you're most likely going to see this little symbol right here for C, which indicates that the 121.1 becomes the CTAF frequency after the tower has closed. So if you're going into Hawthorne at late at night, the control tower is closed, you're going to use 121.1 for the common traffic advisory frequency. On the next line, we have the ATIS frequency, 118.4. Use that to get your ATIS before you contact the tower. Next, we have the airport elevation, 66 feet in this case. L with a little star there, which means that there's lighting with some restrictions that you need to re reference the airport facility di uh, directory for. Uh, in all practical purposes, it means that there's pilot controlled lighting that you can activate on the CTAF frequency uh, after the tower is closed. Next, we have the runway length of the longest runway, and that'll be in hundreds of feet. So 4,900 is the longest runway. Now take note here that the elevation is 66 and the runway length is 49. 
that can get really confusing if you're looking at it and you don't remember which is in which spot. You could uh, inadvertently look at it and say their longest runway is 6,600 feet long and the airport's at 49 feet. One thing to note, the airport elevation will be in italic print. But again, with two numbers, it's very hard to tell that it's in italics. So pay very special attention to which number is the airport elevation and which number is the runway length. Finally, we can tell that we have right-hand traffic to runway 7, just by that RP7, and it's just the same as with a uh, non-towered airport there. There's some reason why there's right-hand traffic to that runway. Okay, so that's a basic towered airport on a VFR sectional. Now let's look at a little bit more complex airport here with Long Beach. Okay, now we're going to start again at the airport diagram. And we can see now that instead of a circle, we have what looks like the outlines of all the runways. And they're all in the correct configuration. So what this now shows us is that the longest runway at this airport is longer than 8,069 feet. As we were saying before, the circle diagram doesn't allow for any scale above 8,069 feet on the runways when the FAA goes to draw them to scale. So once they get above that number, they have to actually just show the runway layout as these uh, little white lines outlined with either uh, blue for towered or magenta for non-towered airports. Okay, so we now know that the longest runway is greater than 8,069 feet. It's hard surface. And one other little difference to note here is that the star for the rotating beacon is going to actually be in a pretty close spot to where the beacon really is on the airport surface. So the beacon, if you're looking for it, is going to be just about there on the airport surface. Now there's no tick marks or anything to indicate services. Uh, they're generally provided once you start to get up to airports of this size, but you're going to have to look in the airport facility diagram just to double check what is available at this airport. Now, going back up to the description, we can see we have the same. We have Long Beach, Daughtry Field, the identifier LGB. And now we come back to this control tower frequency. And here we have 119.4 with a star, which tells us that it doesn't operate continuously. Then we have that C for the CTAF frequency, 120.5. And again, another star telling us that that frequency does not operate continuously either for a control tower. So which frequency would the CTAF be after the tower closes? Well, the answer is going to be 119.4. The CTAF frequency is always going to be the frequency right before the C on the control tower line. Next, just like before, we have the ATIS frequency, 127.75. The elevation, 60 feet. Pilot controlled lighting, which will be after the control tower closes. During control tower operation, the control tower will control the lights at the airport, but that little star just means that they're not continuously lit. So after the tower closes, they're gonna revert back to some configuration that's not continuous and will generally involve you turning on the lights using the CTAF frequency. Okay, we have the longest runway again in hundreds of feet, so 100, and add another two zeros, so 10,000 feet long for the longest runway at Long Beach. Now we have this 122.95. A 122.95 is going to be Unicom frequency. It's a uh, where you can call to request different services and talk to whoever's on the Unicom at that time. It is not the common traffic advisory frequency. So when the control tower is closed, do not use 122.95. You'll want to come up and use that 119.4. 122.95 is strictly 
for information and requests that you may have and when you need to talk to uh, someone on the ground at Long Beach other than the control tower. Now we'll come down here and we see that there's right patterns for a whole bunch of runways. 7 right, 1 6 right, 2 5 right, and 3 4 right all have right hand traffic patterns. Just something to keep in mind when you come into an airport like this, there may be a bunch of runways that have right hand traffic patterns, not just one. Okay, now let's take one more step up in complexity and let's look at Los Angeles International Airport. Again, by looking at the runway diagram, we can tell that the longest runway is over 8,069 feet long. And the runways are in the general configuration of the airport. Now it almost looks like there are two separate airports here because they're separated. So you're going to have to just pay some special attention to that when you're looking at these airports on a diagram. They might have two runways that are separated by quite a bit even though they're the same airport. So unless you see a real specific description for another set of runways, they're probably all grouped together for the same airport. And it also helps when you're going into an airport to know how many runways that you're looking for um, prior to getting there. So you know Los Angeles International has four runways. We can count top to bottom one, two, three, four, and assume that all those runways are part of the airport. Again, the rotating beacon star is where it's located on the airport, right there between the two runways. And now we're going to come over here to the description. The first difference is this no SVFR. That just means you can't go into Los Angeles special VFR. Most large Class B airports are going to have a restriction like this, basically just because they don't want general aviation traffic going in and out, special VFR if the approach and departure controllers have a lot of other traffic to worry about. And the tower controllers also can't control a lot of uh, other traffic coming into the airport just because of their workload for the uh, normal takeoffs and uh, arrivals at that airport. Next we have the airport name, Los Angeles International, and the identifier LAX. The control tower frequencies of 120.95 and 133.9. There are no stars, so the control tower operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It's always open. You always have to talk to the control tower. ATIS, 133.8. The elevation for the airport, 125 feet. The L here indicates that there is continuous lighting. Since the tower is open all the time, basically the lights are on all the time because there's somebody in the tower to control them and they're going to leave them on. Also, the, an airport like this is going to get arrivals 24 hours a day, so there's no need to uh, turn the lights off for any specific reason. Airports that have highly controlled lighting generally don't expect to get arrivals uh, throughout the night, so uh, lights go out both to save energy and also because they uh, saves the lifespan on the lights. Next we have the longest runway. Again in hundreds, 12,100 feet. And this is another special airport to look at when you're looking at elevation and longest runway. 125 feet and 12,100 feet look an awful lot alike. You can kind of see the italics a little more here on this 125 now since there's three numbers. But when numbers are close like that again, it's really confusing to remember which one is which. And again, we have the 122.95 Unicom frequency here for the airport. Here's another note about towered airports. Just keep in mind that even though, yeah, they have a control tower and that means that there's somebody there all the time, Los Alamitos here is an Army airfield, AAF. And uh, you see there's no services available there. That means that if you were to land there, uh, you're probably not going to be able to get any fuel or any other services. They're probably all military provided, and uh, they're not available for any general aviation traffic. Also note here that uh, there is a VOR, Seal Beach VOR, co-located with Los Alamitos, and uh, that 
little dot right there on the airport does indicate the location of the VOR. So just like non-towered airports, the little dot within the circle indicates that the uh, that's the VOR location on the airport. Okay, here's just a few more quirky items here on uh, San Diego right here. We see that we have this airport of entry, AOE. That just means there's customs facilities available there. So if you're coming in from uh, an international destination, you can get customs there. Uh, here at Gillespie Field, we have this RP star. And that indicates there's right-hand traffic patterns. And uh, there's some more information that you need to go look up to determine exactly what's going on with those right-hand traffic patterns. They are not, uh, there's more information than just the actual runway itself. Okay, there's a lot more information that could be on these airport descriptions as well. And here is the full list from the FAA Chart User's Guide of what you might see on those airport descriptions. So as you can see uh, here, if there's a flight service station, it's going to say FSS. We saw the no special VFR there at Los Angeles where you can't do special VFR. Uh, we have the name. Uh, if it had an ICAO different identifier, you would have uh, there the P. So places like Hawaii, uh, you start with a P for the airport uh, identifier, and Alaska as well. So you're going to see a P and then the three letters there. Anchorage, for example, P-A-N-C. Uh, control tower frequencies, uh, we can see the star here means that it's not continuous. C follows the conflict common traffic advisory frequency all the different types of weather information that you could possibly have listed elevation and lighting and runway length information the unicom frequency if there's right hand traffic patterns and here's that rp star where you have to see the facility directory uh, just to see what is going on with those right hand traffic patterns a vfr advisory frequency so if there is no atis and uh, there's a different frequency other than the control tower that vfr traffic needs to talk to you'll have that that is really uncommon i have never come across that and uh, if you do please let me know so i can take a look at it and see exactly where it is uh, weather camera available here. We have that that's in Alaska uh, Just so that you can see what's going on at that airport And finally this AOE airport of entry So you could have a lot of information in these airport descriptions and uh, if we just sort of scroll up here We can see just how uh, Just how crazy some of these descriptions could get so that's it for the basics of towered airports on a VFR sectional. I hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation lesson. For more great content, come visit us at KL Aviation.